All right, so our last step for now with advice is to kind of make some presentation drawings and make things look kind of nice um, and make essentially a little packet that you can give to someone that details the vice. So let's open up our assembly. And we just want to make two quick changes to kind of make this look a little nicer. We're going to close the vice, and then I want to make my handle knob and rod to be um, standing vertically with the bottom of one of the knobs flush with the bottom of the base. So let's go to constraint, and I'm going to select the bottom of my base. I want to change it to a flush constraint. Select one of my handle knob sides, and there we go. And now that just stands vertically, essentially, there. Now we can still open it, but we want to keep it closed for now. All right, now we need to create um, a new file called a drawing file. So we're going to go up to New and click the drop down and click on Drawing. And this is essentially a fake piece of paper. So anything you see here, if we were to print, would print, and anything we put inside of this will print as well. Um, there's a few things we need to do before we can start actually doing some work in here. First, we need to change some information in here. So currently, it's drawn by your student ID number or my, um, my employee no name of Z Cohen. Uh, it has the date, which is correct, but it has no other information. So up here in our browser, let's right click where it says Drawing and go to Eye Properties. We can go to summary, and in the title, we can type in all caps, vice. Author would be you, so your name. We could put Zachary Cohen. And manager would be me as your teacher, so for that, just put Mr. Cohen. And company would be South River High School. Click OK, and you can see that stuff shows up there. Now your manufacturer or your manager doesn't, but I can check it later um, another way to see if he did that or not. Now one of the other problems with this is this is a very large piece of paper. If I were to print this, well, um, it would show up. Let's see if we can get that to show. No. Um, well, anyway, it would show up as what's called an ANSI C size paper, which is uh, 17 inches by 22 inches, I believe. Not your standard 8.5 by 11, which is your standard piece of computer paper, essentially. So let's go over to Sheet 1, right click on it, and click Edit Sheet. Here it says Size. Yep. So the height 17 inches, width is 22. Change the size to A which is your standard size of paper, 8.5 by 11. Click OK, and now it's a regular piece of paper. And you can note, see this thing here, which is called your title block, got way bigger. And while this is the standard size title block for a C size of paper or um, a D or E size, it's not for A. So in our browser where it says ANSI large, let's just click on that, right click, click delete, there it goes. And then here on Drawing Resources, I'm going to click Little Plus, and I have all these different options, and go to Title Blocks, ANSI A, double click on it, and you can see a smaller title block shows up. Now our page is ready to go, and so we can start putting some information in here. Our very first page, see it says Sheet 1, so that'll be our first page. We just want a picture of our vice, essentially. So I'm going to go up here and click on Base, it should already have the vice um, selected because that's the only thing you have open. But if it's not, we can click on the Find button and find your vice. Now, mine's not showing up right now. That's because I have to change my files of type from presentation to an, a uh, just an inventor files. Here's all my files in, and then I can find my assembly. Now, this is way too big. You can see me hovering around, and that vice is huge. So let's change our scale to 1 divided by 2 or 1 half scale, and that looks a lot better. Now, I also want to change my orientation to ISO top right. And this is kind of our home view, and it just shows us what's going on. So let's just click anywhere off of this area, so like right there, and there's a vice. And I get into this crazy thing here. I'm just going to right click, click OK, and now I'm done. Now we can center the vice. 
on the piece of paper, and I want to make it colorful. So I'm going to double click on it to get back into this menu. And down here where it says style, um, I have currently this one selected, hidden lines removed. If we had that selected, it would look like that. It shows us everything kind of behind the scenes. We don't really want that. This other one is called shaded. So I click that. Let's see what happens. There, it's a nice colorful vice now. So that's exactly what we want for our first page. All right, let's go to our second page then by going up here to our ribbon and clicking New Sheet. And this is going to have what's called a parts list. It essentially details every single part and how many of them go into our vise. So we're going to go up here and click Base. And instead of selecting our assembly, I'm going to click the Open Existing File and find our presentation file that we made earlier, this viceexplosion.ipn. Double click on that. Change it to ISO top right again, so that's kind of our home view. And let's change our scale to, let's see, one half is way too big, so let's change it to one quarter. That looks like a good scale there. Just click anywhere. Um, and again, right click, click OK. And we don't want this shaded, so this is good. Now that we have our explosion here, we're gonna change or we're gonna add a list of all the parts in this, and then we're gonna label them. So let's switch tabs up in our ribbon to annotate. And this is where we can dimension things and add text and holes and stuff. Um, we're gonna go all the way over to a parts list. So I'm gonna click on that, and it's asking me to select the view that I want to um, specify. So we're gonna just select this area here that we just put in. And then we could just click OK. And when we get this, click OK again. And we get this box. We're going to put this box in the bottom corner, so right above our title block against the edge. And you see it kind of snaps there. And there's our parts list. There's a lot of information in it. Um, and right now, we don't really need the description tab. So we're going to right click on description. I'm sorry, we're going to double click on description. So double click on it. And then here, I'm going to right-click on Description now, go to Column Chooser. Here's all the different columns we can have. Here's what we do have. I want to remove Description, so I'm going to click on it, click Remove, and then click OK, and there it goes. Click OK again, and it's no longer there. So let's move that back down so it lines up. And then let's make this a little smaller. If I hover over the lines, I get little arrows saying I can move it. So let's make our quantity a little bit smaller and our item number a little bit smaller. And parts number can stay the same, actually. Actually, I'm going to make part number a little bit bigger so everything's on one line. It doesn't have to go to two lines. Move that back down in the corner, and there's our parts list. Now, we're going to make, then, balloons. They're little circles, essentially, that correspond to each and every one of these parts um, so that we can see which part is which. And those balloons are going to correspond to these item numbers. So the balloon for the base will be number one. The balloon for the job plates will be number nine. So up in the upper right corner, there you would have something that says balloon. Click on the drop down and go to auto balloon. Then select this view, so just click anywhere on it. And then you have to add components. We want to select everything that's on here only once. So there's two job plates, only select one of them. Two keys, only select one of them. Four of these screws, only select one of them. So I'm going to just go through and click on the outline of each thing. And once I'm done that, there should be 11 things I clicked on. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Go up here to select placement. And I'm going to change it to a round. And I'm going to just click anywhere. We're going to be moving these in anyway. So it doesn't really matter where we put them. And then click OK. Now, these particular balloons weren't didn't really do a horrible job. Um, but we don't want things crossing over the part. So we can move that so it doesn't cross over the part. And then sometimes you might have a balloon like that or it goes over other parts. We also don't want that. So to move these around, I can just click on this number and pull it around. And then to move the arrow, I can zoom in on it. 
there's two dots. I want to select the dot on the smaller side of the arrow, and I can just drag that and snap that to a line. Also, I don't want my lines to be at a straight angle. I don't want it to be like that or that. I want them to have a fairly large angle. And there we go. Fairly clean. All my balloons are coming off at an angle when possible. It's not always possible. Like this 8 is fairly vertical, um, but there's no real way without cutting over that part. Um, so this looks perfect now. All right, so this page is done. So let's go to the next page. We're going to go back to Place Views and click New Sheet. And now we want to put the overall dimensions of our part. So let's go again to Base. And make sure we have our assembly selected, so vice.iam. And I want to make sure it's quarter scale again, and our orientation should be front this time, so just like it is. I'm going to click and off the screen, and then I can move around. And we used to just right-click, click Continue, but now we're going to go up and click the there, go over, click there, and now I can right-click, click Create. And that gives us our front, our top, and our right view of these parts. Now, say you actually deleted one, or say you didn't do one, it's okay. We can just go up to here to projected, click on that base view, the first view, and then again, right click, click create. So it's pretty easy to add a view if you forget one. Now on this page, we're going to be fairly simple. I just want to know my overall dimensions of this part. So the overall width of the part, the overall height of the part, and the overall length. So let's go back to the Annotate tab and click Dimension. Let's do our length first. So on our front view, we're going to go to the frontmost extreme corner of our part, to the rearmost uh, part corner of our part. And then we're going to just drag this up here. And you can see when I move up certain distances, it turns to a dotted line. Those are specified spaces. I want to be the closest dotted line that's not over a part. So this would be bad here because it's over my handle knob. But this one, where are you? It's pretty good because I'm not over any part. So I'm going to just click. Then this menu comes up. Um, this dimension is actually 9.736 inches, but it's rounding to 9.74. I just want to change my primary unit to three decimal places, so 3.123, and that will show me that full di dimension. So click OK, and there we go. Now let's place our depth of our part. So I'm going to go from one extreme to the other. There we go. Just click OK on that one. That one's fine. And then I want my height. So again, from the very highest point to the very lowest point, And find that dotted line. There we go. Click OK. And there we go. There is my overall width, uh, width, depth, and height. All right. So we now have three sheets. And each one is exactly what we want. And if we were to be doing this properly, we would then create a number more sheets with every individual part and all the dimensions for every single part in it. Uh, but we're not going to worry about that just yet. So we can go ahead and save this and save it as Vice Drawing. Click Save and click OK. And then there's one last thing I want you to do with this. I want you also to turn this into a PDF file. So I want you to go to the big eye, click Export, click PDF. And before you do anything, 
click on options. And right now it's only going to save the current sheet, the one sheet that you're on. I want you to click all sheets, click OK, and then you can click save. And that will create a PDF of this that shows everything you just created. All right. And that is it then for the vice.